Welcome back to Create Mod. In the last episode, I built a storage building and filled it full of storage and then built a big drill outside to drill down to the bottom of the world. And in this episode, I'm going to be venturing to the nether to catch some blazes, building a brand new crushing machine to collect XP from blocks and store it for me. And then I'm going to be building an automatic lift to go down that hole that I made. Let's create. As usual, I started by doing a little bit of work off camera, which included breeding the sheep, modifying the automatic drilling machine we made in the last episode to drill out a slightly bigger hole, and then manually deforesting even more of the area around our base location with a mechanical saw and crank in order to get some more spruce logs. By that time, the automatic drilling had finished, so I dismantled the drilling machine and then added some new stairs and a whole new floor to our storage building to make room for some more villagers. I went back to the old village to grab some more villagers and then spent absolutely ages rolling their trades over over and over to get some decent enchantments for my tools. So the mining then, well, it didn't really give us much more than we don't already have. I got a bunch of deep slate, I got some tuff and some dirt and a bit of cobble and one diamond and some iron from it, which isn't bad, but it could have been better. The good news is though, now that we've got an upstairs in our storage room, we've got a whole bunch of villagers and they have given us a whole bunch of enchantments. In fact, there's only one villager I haven't properly locked in and that's this Feather Falling 4 one, because I'm not 100% sure I want to spend 41 emeralds on Feather Falling 4. But what we have got is a whole bunch of books now, and with these incredible books, as well as our trusty anvil, I could add Silk Touch and Mending to our amazing Fane Mining Pickaxe. And I think Silk Touch would be better than Fortune, because you can do a lot more with Stone and normal Deep Slate than you can do the Cobbled variants. That said, I'm not allowed to put Silk Touch on it, which is a bit of a problem. So I guess in that case, we should put Fortune 3 on there instead of Silk Touch. And Mending as well. And now we've got a very nice pickaxe. And with this shiny new pickaxe, Silk Touch, Efficiency 5, and then I've totally run out of levels, which is not ideal. Now I can get a couple of levels, hopefully from Mona, by trading a bit of this wheat. And I've got a couple of bottles of enchanting here, just kicking around so I can use those. I don't quite have enough potatoes to trade those, and I certainly don't have enough carrots to trade those. Which means I'm just four emeralds short to get another mending book. So I guess for now this shiny new Silk Touch pickaxe is going to have Unbreaking 3 on it, but no mending. And what might be good news for you, but not necessarily for me, I need to go back to the nether and capture some blazes. So recapping, looking back at the map, there really doesn't look like there's anything looking like a fortress anywhere nearby. However, there's a bunch of stuff down here. That all looks very interesting. And over in the top left, there's a bunch of stuff up there that all looks very interesting as well. But I guess we're just going to have to dig in a direction and hopefully see if we can find some sort of fortress. Doesn't look great. It especially doesn't look great because every single direction I've dug in has got a sheer drop down. Oh, goody, another sheer drop. Oh, jeez. I smell a bastion. I may have made an oopsie with my staircase. Oh, jeez. I'm not wearing gold. That could be a problem. Yeah, the love that guy's in there. Bastion's a bad idea. And what is this thing? Probably certain death. It looks like certain death. You're such a baby. No, I'm not prepared. Well, I'm prepared, guys. There it is. I can see the fortress. I'm not at it yet, but I can just about see it. But unfortunately, my inventory is pretty much full and my backpack's full. So I really need to go home, get rid of all of this before we get in there. Oh, jeez. And it shouldn't be a long journey at all. No, my li little zigzaggy maze of a path should make it nice and easy to get home. Oh, jeez. And there we go, we've made it safely home. This is good news. And before we get back, one of the reasons I wanted Silk Touch was to grab all of this raw ore. Because once I've got some brass, I can make these crushing wheels, and I believe when you use a crushing wheel, it will drop the XP from the blocks that give XP, which is amazing. Then we can collect it with disenchanters and store all of the XP, and then get it when we need it, which is fantastic. So yeah, we're going to hang on to this stuff. Going to restock some torches. Craft a new shovel, go back into the nether, make that epic journey all over again, and then capture some blazes. I forgot gold again. There we are. We have made it to a fortress. That looks like a blaze spawner just there. Can't get me now, guys. Hopefully. 
Got one. Oh. Fire. Two. Ah. Hey, guys. Oh, there's a place behind me. How did you get over there? Oh. Come here. There we go. Got another one. Oh, there's another one over there. Come here. Oh. Thank you. I just need two more. Come on, little spawner. Spawn me a couple more. There we go. One, two. Oh, there we go. We now have a whole bunch of blaze things. Now, it would be good, he says, dangerously, to have a quick look around here and just see if we can find any chests and things because nether fortresses have good loot normally, don't they? Nothing. Oh, great. Now the gas spotted me. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> With wiggly legs. <laughs> want a couple of chests. That's all I want. Hey, guys. Got any chests? <gasps> With the skeleton, run away. Ah, my new bar doing its thing. Come here, you. Oh, my first blaze rod. It doesn't feel like there's any loot at this uh, fortress that I can see immediately. So I'm going to do the... Oh, oh Jesus. Magma Q's on my way out. That's not ideal. Oh, jeez. I've got to dodge past these guys. Oh, run. Run away. Oh, I did it. I made it back. Amazing. So now that I've got all of these blaze burners and a whole bunch of create stuff in my backpack, it's time to go back over to our kelp farm building and build some stuff. Now, the first thing I want is brass. And in order to get brass, I need a mixer with a blaze burner underneath, some copper and some zinc. And that shouldn't be too difficult at all. However, we've got this lovely contraption here. In fact, it's absolutely full of dried kelp. So I should probably turn the bone meal system back on. But before I do that, I'm actually going to take the entire thing to bits and move it around a bit because I want to build other things that are to do with creating this area and make use of the incredible amount of power that we're generating from this water wheel. So I'm going to have to destroy everything that we've got in here before I can start. What are you doing in here, crow? Clear off. Get out of it. Get off me kelp. Okay, so now we're going to just bring the power into this room like we did before, just from there. And I'm going to divert the kelp over in this direction to run along here and either be smelted or go into a composter. I need to make some brass tunnels so that I can split the items between both systems. And in order to do that, I'm going to need brass. And I'm also going to need electron tubes, which is polished rose quartz, which comes from rose quartz, which comes from redstone and quartz. And I've got all these things now. Okay, blaze burner there, basin on top, mixer in totally the wrong place. How did I manage that? Mixer there. There we go. Nice. We're also going to want our mechanical press set back up, which requires a shaft instead of a cog. And we'll probably want a millstone setting up as well. Tidy it all up a bit with a bit of andesite casing. And now we've got a wall of things. All right, let's grab some coal, some zinc, and some copper. Shove all of that copper in there, I think. How do I do it? Can I just throw it in? There we go. I wanted to put the whole lot in there. All of the zinc in there. And then fire up the blaze and off it goes here we go we're now creating brass this is incredible wow look at that we've already got six brass ingots in there this is incredible and while that's doing that i'm going to make myself a little bit of rose quartz in my backpacks crafting thing like that I've got six of those that should be more than enough for now and then i need sandpaper which is just sand and paper easy i have 21 sands i only need one thank you but I have absolutely no paper and no sugar cane. Oh, jeez. Can I grind books down to make paper? I can press sugar cane into paper. I can... How do I get tree bark? I can turn tree bark into paper. I get tree bark from a chopping board. That's easy. I can do that. Give me a cutting board, please. Should have some cabinets kicking around somewhere. Now we use this smoker for now. Smoker with a cutting board on top. Some logs. Stick it on there. And then... Then I just... Wow. Okay, one for one? What? Oh, I get the strip log, but I get the bark from it. Okay, there's got to be a nice easy way of doing this. Can I offhand this? There we go. One paper, please. And one sandpaper, please. This is fantastic. Now, I believe if I hold this rose quartz in one hand and my uh, sandpaper in the other hand... There we go. Look at me sanding this stuff. Then I just need an iron sheet and a piece of that to make an electron tube. I need to get my brass that's all finished out of there. A little bit of dried kelp. And now I can make two tunnels. In fact, oh, you get two each time. Oh, this is incredible. 
And with a gearbox there, I can then connect that to that, but then that's going to be going the wrong way around. So realistically, I need another gearbox to change the direction of it, which is going to make it stick out way too far because I want it to line up with that. If I get rid of that there, we don't actually need that there and stick a gearbox there. Now we're turning the right way. Here we go. So if I attach that to that, that's that conveyor going. Then if I put one of those there, another gearbox there, now that's going the wrong way. Oh, jeez. One of those there, one of those there, and a gearbox. There we go. Now we're going the right way. I need to put one of those there. There we go. So that's now going up there. Get ourselves a nice encased chain drive. Stick it there like that. That's going to go up there. And hopefully they're going to pop off and go up into that hopper. Or not. Does it need to be one higher? Really? Really, game? Fine. One of those there. One of those there. One of those there. And then a chain drive there. And we're off to the races. Now it should work. Sort of. Why is it... What, it worked before. Do I need to stick a funnel on top of that hopper? Like that. There we go. There we go. We're now composting. Fantastic. So that's the compost side of things done. And now this is where our tunnels come in. So we get one of these brass tunnels. And if we put a tunnel on, uh, I guess, here... Just do that a second. Pop that there. Or is it just going to naturally go? It looks like it's just naturally splitting between them anyway. Oh, fantastic. Okay, good. So you can have split round robbery, forced round robbery, randomized, synchronized inputs. Uh, I, I guess we just want split. Yeah. Okay, great. Now we stick a fan on there. The campfire on there. And now all we've got to do is blow air towards that thing. One of those there. There we go. Now that's got some speed. One of those there. And one of those there. Is that going to be turning the right way? It is. Probably a little bit quick, though. What about now? Is that going to cook before it gets to the end? Yeah, it is. Now we got dried kelp going in there, but that looks awful with that. I want the bone meal below it, really, which means I need to bring this over one more, which means I need one more hopper. That's fine. Put it down there. Pop a hopper there. And here we go. The dried kelp is coming through. That's fantastic. So we got all of that set up at the back of the room, leaving us all this space for other things. Now it's just time to tidy it up a bit. Wonderful. That looks a whole lot better. Everything's working, and we've got a whole bunch of room on this side of the room to put a whole bunch more things. And I'm definitely going to be building a bunch more things. Starting with some more upgrades for my backpack. So first of all, I need the blank upgrades. And then I need to spend some diamonds. And I don't have many diamonds, but I am going to waste eight of them on here. Oh, I've got to go gold tier first. Oh, geez. Okay, I need to make a gold one then. No problem. Gold upgrade. Backpack. Gold upgrade. Backpack. Diamond upgrade. Now this should have a whole bunch more space in it. Yes, it has. And now I can actually fit all of my create stuff in one backpack, which is fantastic. Well, What's less fantastic, though, is I now only have four diamonds. And while I'm here, I might as well get my other backpack upgraded to gold level as well. And now my jewel pack has a little bit more space in it, which is great. And those brass ingots really should be in this one. So the next job on the list is to come back into here because I want to make one of those crushing machines, which means I need to do some mechanical crafting and I've never done that before. But well, they don't look too difficult to make. Uh, apparently, though, you do need a pokey downer otherwise known as a deployer. Ah, maybe you don't need one of those. You can just do it yourself. Right, okay. That said, it probably would be useful to make a deployer because they are handy for a certain thing. So I need a brass hand, which means I need brass sheets, and then some bits that I've already got. So let's grab these brass ingots, stick them on my press, which is a lot faster than it used to be. And then I want to figure out how I deploy my sleeping bag on here to actually sleep. Oh, there we go, just like that. Amazing. So now I can make a brass hand and then a deployer. Fantastic. And then I need to add it onto here somewhere. Doesn't doesn't it need, need to be like... No? Oh, oh. It looks like it wants a depot as well. So let's grab one of those while we're at it and shove that just there. And there we go. Look at that. Oh, what an amazing looking little wall we've got going on. So mechanical crafter then. Electron tube, brass casing, crafting table. Crafting table, electron tube, and brass casing should be just a case of putting down a bunch of logs, giving them a quick strip, and sticking on some brass. There we go. You get three of them. Okay. How do these work then? Hold W to ponder. Oh, okay. So you need a bunch of them all together. And you can have them in various shapes and sizes and automate things going into them. In that case, to make a crushing wheel, I'm going to need a whole bunch of them. 
21 of them, in fact. And there we go, 21 mechanical crafters. Which, if I place one down, I believe, yeah, they're powered by cogs. So I need to stick a whole bunch of these together. As usual, my beams are in the way. And just like that, they are now all on there, which is fantastic. And I just need to get power to them now. How hard could that be? What could go wrong? I bring this belt along here a little bit more. And then just one of those on there. Oh, and now, oh, geez. Now my entire system's overstressed. It's too stressed out. It can't cope with it all. There's just too much going. It's probably going way too fast. They probably don't need to go very fast, these. There we go. That's going nice and slowly. Little cog there. And a little cog there. And there we go. It's no longer overstressed. This is good news. They've all got power. Now I just need to know the crafting recipe. Andesite alloy all around the outside. A little bit of planks and some andesite in the middle. Or just any stone, apparently. And there we go. They're all in. Oh, and it just does it automatically. Look at it. It's all moving around. Oh, and it all fell off. Oh, I guess you have to direct these so that they're facing the right. Oh, geez. What have I done? No. Oh. Spin them all round a bit. Get them all facing towards the middle would be helpful, I think. That may work, possibly. Bang those back there and one of those there. Is it all going to go together in the middle? Oh, here we go. Did I do it right? Looks like I did. Wow. Where's it going now? It's coming back down again. And now it's going up again. Curious. Do I have to, like, direct it to all come off the whole thing? If I do that, is it all just going to come off the side? Is it going to fall on the floor? No, it did it. <gasps> Amazing. Thank you very much. I'll have two of those. Okay, well, if that's how this system works, then this is all in a very difficult position. I don't want it here. I'm going to move it somewhere else later on. Right, crushing wheels then. This should be relatively easy. If I have two gearboxes like this, and I put one there, although I think that's spinning the wrong way around, with one of those there, and then one of those there, if I was to put one of those on there and one of those on there, that could work, although I think I definitely think they're spinning the wrong way around. There's only one way to find out, and that's to chuck some stuff in it and see what happens. And just chuck a bit of that on there. And yeah, no, they're going the wrong way around. Okay, there we go. Now that's facing the right way. One of those there, one of those there. And with those on there, now we look like we're facing in the right direction. Let's chuck on some of this quartz and see what happens. It went through it. And out the bottom, look at that. I got a nugget of experience, some nether quartz, and a bit of nether rack. So all I'm going to do, just for now as a temporary solution, I'm going to stick a chest there with the funnel coming out of it like that. And that should mean if I put things in that chest, they'll automatically get spit out and put straight through the crushing wheels, which they do. That's fantastic. I need a disenchanter, which is sandpaper and copper casing. And copper casing, oh, it's the same stuff as before. Okay. Mini logs. Give them all a strip. Stick the copper on and smash them all to bits. However, I believe that this enchanter will need some sort of pipe coming out of it in order to siphon the stuff off. So now I need some fluid pipes, which means I need copper sheets and copper. I'm probably also going to need some fluid tanks, which means barrels and those sheets. And I imagine I'm going to need a mechanical pump as well, which is really easy as well. Oh, this is oh, this is super easy. All right, let's grab a handful of pipes, make a pump and make a tank. And let's see if these things go together. OK, so now we have this thing sort of kind of set up. It's a bit of a mess. I'm not 100% sure how this all works yet, so I'm just playing with it. But we've got a chest up there that spits items out into there. They should then land on this conveyor, get pushed over to this disenchanter, which is powered by... Oh, look, it's just taking my enchantments off me. Then that pump will need to face the other way around, and that will pump, hopefully, that liquid XP into this tank here, which it is doing. That's absolutely fantastic. And then I would need another conveyor just taking all of the items into a box. And that should, although we don't even need that to be as long as that, that should then take all of the items that come through and put them inside that chest. And the XP should hopefully all go into that tank. Let's find out. Let's grab this nether quartz ore, stick it in that chest and see what happens. And there we go. It's all working. It's dropping the XP, the quartz. The quartz is just going over and straight into the chest and the XP is is going into the tank however these conveyor belts are going nowhere near fast enough to actually keep up with how fast it's crushing the stuff which really isn't a bad problem to have although it is a bit of a mess and there we go my little system is a lot more tidy now 
We've got a big old fluid tank at the back, which is going to grab the XP. We've got a conveyor system that brings it over into this chest here. We've got our milling wheels, everything's set up, and I've even got a little handle on here, which allows me to get the XP out when I need it, which is fantastic. Now, there's a few things you can crush in this game, and crushing wheels are going to be very important later on when we start making automated iron farms and things like that. But for now, I want to see what happens if I put raw iron in there. Does that get crushed? It does, and you get XP for it as well and crushed raw iron what can you do with that you can smelt it into an ingot so you can get the xp from the crushed iron and then still turn it into an ingot so that's fantastic so i guess what about ancient debris what happens if i put that in there nothing did it or is it just taking ages because it's ancient debris did i get anything did i just lose my ancient debris hello oh i think i might have just lost that then oh geez okay don't put ancient debris in it that was a waste what about gold nether gold yeah that comes straight through you get a bit of xp for that and some nug wow you get a bunch of nuggets from that as well okay so now that's done i am onto my last piece of bread that's it i'm totally out of bread and which means i'm pretty much out of food and i'm down to my last piece of andesite and i desperately desperately need that to be making all of these contraptions so there's a couple of things i really need to do as well as collecting all of this lovely xp look at it go oh this is amazing i need to see if my amazing harvesting machine has got any stuff it has it's got a bunch of carrots potatoes wheats and seeds i need to consider doing something with these sheep because well there's just way too many of them in there i need to trade all of these carrots and potatoes with the villagers and now i can buy golden carrots three of them for just two emeralds fantastic so that's my food situation sorted out but that hasn't sorted out my andesite situation of which i only have one so let's build even more machines so i want to build an automatic mining machine which is going to dig us big tunnels down our big hole the problem is i can't get down the big hole to build it which means i could probably build something up here and then take it down but i still can't get down there so we really do need a way down and the best way to get down there will be with an elevator pulley so i'm going to make one and now i'm going to build an elevator that will take us down our hole and be nice and safe how hard could it be what could possibly go wrong And there we go. It's not all too shabby. I kind of like it, to be honest with you. Although it doesn't work yet because, well, I haven't stuck it together. Which should be relatively easy. All I need is a little bit of glue. So if I stick that glue on the corner there, come on to the top here and go up to there. That should do all of that. And then I want to do that to that. That's that all glued together. And then I just need to get that pulley down to this to actually attach to it, which hopefully won't be too difficult. If I take that off there and take that out of there, I can put in this reverse gear shift there like that. And then if I power that with a redstone lever, that should start spinning the other way. And we should hopefully see that starting to come down, which it's not doing. It's also incredibly slow, which means I need more things, which brings me back to the pokey downer i'm going to be creating a rotational speed controller which requires a precision mechanism which means using the pokey downer a bunch of times so i get some gold sheet i'll put one of those on there no just one and i believe if i give it a cog like how do i give it a cog or like that then it turns into that then i give it a big cog and it turns into that and then i give it an iron nugget and it does that and it's incomplete and i guess i gotta do that five times and this should be the last one if it gets it right i believe it can mess this up and there we go just what i needed so with this precision mechanism and this brass casing i can make a rotational speed controller and i believe that means i can just speed things up without needing lots of gears or at least that's what i'm hoping another thing i'm going to need is a contraption control and i could really do with these linked controllers as well i think i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm going to make them anyway so that's brass and a redstone torch so that gives us a link controller and it grants handheld control over redstone link frequencies designed to six buttons i'll take it so i'm assuming this has got a thingy on both sides it has okay so if i pop that down there in front of that gearbox like that and then i put the gear shift in front of that and then i put the water wheel there i should then be able to just click on this and change the speed to whatever i want so i can turn that all the way up to 250 that didn't do anything did it perhaps we should ponder about this 
Oh, you need to cog in the top of it. Right. No problem. If I then change that speed to really, really fast, that's spinning faster, but this cog... Oh, I see. So it comes out of there. If I stick on a small cog there, a small cog there, and stick a vertical gearbox there, then all I've got to do is bring that down to that bit there. And then we just hide those a little bit like that, make it look a little bit tidier. Lovely. Now, is that actually doing anything with our machine or mechanism up there? It doesn't seem to be. So what I'm going to do now is grab a redstone link, and I'm hoping if I put that on there, and let's just give that, I guess, a, a slab to set that what it is. If I put a, another link... Oh, not what I expected at all. One of those there, I guess. Ah, there we go. I just link it like that. Now, if I hold that and press W, does it change the direction? No, I don't think that's going to do anything. Don't work at all. It's rubbish. Oh, okay. Okay, I have to right-click while sneaking to toggle receive mode. And now, hopefully, there we go. I press up and I can change the direction with this controller. All right. So now if we go all the way back up here and I activate this, nothing at all happens. Or W to ponder. Elevator pulleys can move structures vertically between marked locations. Start by constructing a cabin. I've made one of those down there, yeah. Place a pair of Winstone contacts facing each other. Right, yeah. Glue it all together. Stick a contraption control on. Wire it all up. Right click the volume. Assembles the elevator. Okay. And then you have one further down. Okay, fancy. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get down where to put another one down there. But I can do... But I can do this. Got a redstone contact underneath that there. And glue those on. And then I just need one on the other side. So I should be able to do that by shift and holding that there like that. There we go. Wonderful. I haven't really left myself a lot of room inside of this redstone contraption to put my mechanical mechanic thing in there though. My contraption control. So maybe I can get rid of that bit there and pop that on there instead. There we go. So now I've got a contactor down there. If I right click on this, there we go. Wow, it just went straight down and attached to it. That's fantastic. But because I don't have another contactor further down, it's not going to do anything. <sighs> diamonds. I need diamonds. I very, very, very much need diamonds. So I think if I put it just on that block there... Just like that. There we go. That's already connected as a controller. So now if I go into the lift and click on this, can I change the floor? No. Hmm. Nothing. You suck. Elevator. Oh, do I have to change it? Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, top. Tick. Do I have to go all the way back down there and change the bottom one now? Really? Minus one. Bottom. Tick. Okay, looks like I need to give this a redstone signal down at the bottom to actually activate it. Right. Ooh, sliding doors will open and close automatically. Okay, let's give this a redstone signal then and see if it actually calls the thing down. <gasps> it's moving! It is going incredibly slowly, but it's going. And here it is. It is arriving. Can I change that to top floor? Oh, I can. <gasps> and off I go. I did it, guys. I did it. It is very, very slow, though, but I kind of want to stop off where those diamonds are. I don't know if I can just make it stop. No, I can't. Oh, well. I have to put another floor in at some point. Oh, 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 dear. 